प्रेज अलर्ट गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द सनराइज विद जीजस वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट दैट मोस्ट कलरफुल दैट मोस्ट जॉयफुल दैट मोस्ट एंटिसिपेटेड डायमेंशन ऑफ क्रिसमस एंड दैट इज ऑफ गिविंग गिफ्ट्स Christmas is a time of gift giving. It is a time of so much of joy and love. You realize how much you are loved. You experience so much joy as you receive and as you give gifts. And every Christmas very many of us are wondering what gifts am I going to get this Christmas? first from santa claus and then from the other people who came into our lives and i have this peculiar habit every christmas of insisting on jesus jesus on christmas day you must do something very special for me you must give me a very nice gift and then one christmas a question popped in my head who gives who gifts when you go for a birthday celebration does the birthday baby give the guests a gift or do the guests give the birthday baby a gift all the more on christmas it should be me who gives jesus a gift because i am so grateful that he is born for me for us and i was thinking to myself so what gift can i give jesus and i thought what about a beautiful red rose and i thought if i give god a beautiful rose i'm giving a rose to him who formed its delicate petals to him who shaded it in such rich colors to him who drew it out from the dust of the earth I'm giving the rose to him who is the god of all creation the god who has all the stars who holds all of creation and the god to whom everything belongs even this rose but I must give him this rose to remind myself that this rose belongs to him This rose belongs to him just as I belong to him. I and you we were formed by his love, shaded by his wisdom and drawn out of the dust of the earth. And whenever we give to God, we are reminding ourselves that in fact all that we have, all that we own and possess, in fact we ourselves belong to god the very first christmas gifts were given by the wise men they when they went to see the king the newborn king as it is rightful when you visit a king they opened out to him the treasures they had you read this in matthew chapter 2 verse 11 that these wise men bowed down before the newborn king and opened up their treasures and gave to him frankincense gold and myrrh frankincense gold and myrrh are these appropriate gifts appropriate gift for a newborn babe what would the baby jesus do with myrrh myrrh in fact is more closely associated with death with suffering and sacrifice and here is where we see when you look at a gift that you give to god you can never give god anything that is appropriate i remember seeing this cartoon where you have the three wise men going and giving frankincense gold and myrrh and then come three wise women and thank god for three wise women who give to him and the young family all that a baby would require baby oil and baby food and baby clothes but friends that was a cartoon the word of god says that these wise men gave frankincense gold and myrrh 
because this was their treasures. And here is where we see, we are told what we give to God has to be not what God can use because God has no use for anything that we can give. God has everything. What can we give God? But in fact, what we must give him is what we treasure. Why? Because what we treasure, in fact, indicates who we are. For a rich man, gold is his treasure. For a poorer man, silver may be his treasure. And for the very poor, maybe mud is their only treasure. And here we see when we give what we treasure the most to God, God honors that treasure, placing an eternal value on it as he did with the gifts of the wise men. When the wise men gave gold, frankincense and myrrh, it took on prophetic dimensions that to this day we understand that when they gave what they treasured, in fact, it came to signify what that newborn child would be. Gold, because he would be a king. Frankincense, because he would be the high priest and myrrh because he would be the sacrifice. The treasure we offer to God, he takes over and places on it an eternal glorious value. The only gifts that we can give to God is what is inappropriate and is what is extremely precious. Friends, the more we give God, the more we realize we are never giving him enough. In Mark chapter 14, you have this woman giving a most inappropriate gift to Jesus. Jesus is reclining at the home of Simon, his friend. And that is when this woman comes and the gospel describes, she comes with a bottle of perfume. And it continues to describe it was genuine and costly spike nard. And this is a very strong and costly perfume. And usually people would take a few drops of that oil to anoint a person, to anoint an important guest. But what does she do? She breaks that bottle and empties that entire bottle of spikenard perfume to anoint Jesus and everyone is scandalized. Yes, the gift given to Jesus causes scandal. And they say, how could she empty an entire bottle? This is a criminal waste. The cost of that perfume is equal to 300 days of wages, an entire year's salary. And this could have given, been given to the poor. And that is when Jesus stands up for her and honors her. And Jesus says, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, it is her act of generosity, of love, of this gift, that will be repeated. Friends, Jesus was saying, for the gospel to be proclaimed, the only way is through a complete and crazy self-giving of love. Well, we all could think, I can give God a little rose, one rose from an entire garden. But in fact, I must know, when the gospel is to be proclaimed, when my life has to be good news, I need to give him all that I have. Maybe people would say, this is not needed. Well, it is not needed, but it is appropriate. When we give to Jesus all that we have, we can be sure of one thing. Our God is very poor in mathematics. Whatever deal you have with God is unfair. How? In Matthew 19, 29, Jesus says, Whoever gives up father and mother and lands and brothers and sisters and follows me will receive a hundred times more in this life and 
eternal life. Whatever we give to God, we will get back a hundredfold. And friends, what we do not give to God is lost. What is not given, what is not gifted to God is lost. Whatever gift we give to God, we realize is an unequal deal. And we also know that every deal we make in life is unequal. There's no such thing as perfect mathematics. You look at today's saint, Saint Francis Xavier, and we see what touched him and what made him give over his life as a gift to Jesus was that Bible verse in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus says, What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Friends, today we want to know what is it that we want to gain? We could be busy trying to gain the whole world. We could be afraid to give of ourselves because we want to gain. We want to grab. We want to fill our life with as many gifts as we can get. But Jesus tells us, if you really want to have your soul, the soul with which we can love and treasure and rejoice in life, we need to give our lives over to God. When Francis Xavier looked at this unfair deal of the world, where you go and grab the world and lose your soul, he decided he wanted to give his life and his everything to Jesus. And did he not get a hundred times more? Centuries pass and we still remember this great man whose life was a gift to God. Friends, today, as we prepare for Christmas, yes, it is 22 days to Christmas. Let us think how we can give a beautiful rose to Jesus, reminding ourselves that yes, this rose and everything we have and we ourselves were formed by him, by his love, shaded in his perfect wisdom, drawn from the dust of the earth and covered in eternal glory because we are gifted to the King of Kings. This day, the 3rd of December, is of special solemnity for us in India because today, we celebrate the feast of the great missionary, St. Francis Xavier. Prophet Isaiah has said, chapter 52, verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger of peace, the one who announces peace and salvation. When we visit in a sacred pilgrimage, the Bom Jesu Basilica of Gova, the words, these prophetic words resound in our hearts. On the 6th of May, 1542, the 16th century, St. Francis Xavier landed in the shores of Gova and preached the gospel, establishing a vibrant church there. From Gova, his zeal took him to the of Kerala. From there to the eastern countries, he evangelized the Malay Peninsula and especially Japan. And when on his way to China, he expired in a lonely island, Shanchun, off the coast of China on the 3rd of December, 1552. And the body of St. Francis Xavier was brought to Gova and thousands flocked today. And almost every day of the year, the Basilica, Bom Jesu Basilica, to venerate the body 
of St. Francis Xavier, the uncorrupted body of this great saint. There's something mysterious about this. The body, a human body, remaining uncorrupted for five centuries. Over these centuries, political systems, economic structures have prevailed on the face of the earth and decayed. Empires of hatred have risen and fallen down and become part of the mud of the earth. Great men in the fields of literature, economics, and politics have come up and forgotten today. And yet, over the centuries, defeating the decaying power of this earth, the body, the human body, saintly body of Francis Xavier remains uncorrupted to this day. There is something beautiful, a mystery being revealed to us. And there is a story behind it. At the age of 19, a vibrant young man that Francis was, he went to Paris to be educated in the most reputed university of the time, University of Paris. And he was admired by everyone, an athletic body and smart mind of quick wit. He was a popular among his friends. But then he had two roommates, Peter Faber and Ignatius of Loyola. Ignatius of Loyola had come to study in the University of Paris at an advanced age after having been defeated and wounded in a war and totally converted to the Lord, living for the Lord. And Peter Faber slowly was inclined to the spiritual trend of this great man, Deola. But Francis insulated himself from that spiritual talk. There was a reason for this. Francis went to Paris to conquer the world. When he was born, he was born into a very aristocratic family in the royal castle of Saviour. His father was the finance minister of the great king John III of Navarre. But then Navarre was conquered, invaded by the Spanish emperor. And in a prolonged war, this Basque territory, Navarre, lost everything. And his father died. And Francis, the family of Francis, lost everything except their residence. It was the desire the longing of Francis as he grew up to restore the lost fortunes of the family and to come to the top of the world. Once again, aristocratic, royal, and, and admired by everyone in Navarre. And that's why he went to the university and Loyola began to talk to him. And the one word Loyola would tell him, Matthew 16, 26, Francis, you could gain the whole world, and if you forfeit your soul, what profit it is. Francis thought it was a joke, did not mean anything to him. And then he was irritated with this man, double of his age. He was 38 then. And then he was disturbed by this word, Francis. What does it profit you? After having gained the whole world, if you forfeit your soul. He was disturbed 
at one time that word pierced his heart as the letter to hebrews tells us hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 the word of god is a double edged sword it cuts straight into the heart into the deepest thoughts and ambitions of the mind and the heart this exactly what the word of god did to francis he was cut deep and then he came to a peace after having found jesus as we gather in this place today Holy Spirit come and have your way have your way As we lay aside our own desires sweep across our hearts with holy fire have your This is your house your home we welcome you lord we welcome you this is your house your home we welcome you today this is your house your home This is your home. This is your house. Your home. Your home. We welcome you. We welcome you today. As we gather in this place this morning. As we gather in your presence, oh God. This is our one prayer. Come into our lives. sweep across our hearts with your holy fire come holy spirit for we are yours oh god let's invite the holy spirit the god who stands knocking knocking at the door of our heart let's stretch our hands out to him and tell him lord have your way come holy spirit as we offer up our hearts and lives let them be a living sacrifice have your way have your way be glorified oh god be glorified in everything we do be glorified be glorified in everything we say have your way have your way this is your house i am yours lord this is your house show home we welcome you we welcome you lord we welcome you this is your house this is your house your home show We welcome you. We welcome you today. This is your house. Your home. Your home. We welcome you. We welcome you. Lord, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house. This is your house. Your home. Your home. We welcome you. We welcome you. Hallelujah 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 come holy spirit come lord our father we praise you our father we adore you oh father we are yours lord jesus we love you lord lord jesus you are the savior oh god you have saved us lord and we belong to you oh lord we praise you and we adore you we thank you lord for giving us your holy spirit 
Oh Holy Spirit, sweet Holy Spirit, we love you Holy Spirit. You are the joy of our hearts. You are the courage of our spirit. Praise you God. Hallelujah. 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 Let us praise God. Let us praise God for He dwells. Our God is enthroned in our praises. We welcome Him. We enthrone Him with our praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come Lord. We need you Lord. We praise you Lord. We adore you God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Praise you Holy Spirit Lord. We adore you God. Oh God, today we welcome you. We have so many prayers, oh God. We have asked you for everything. But this morning, Lord, over and above all things, we want you in our lives. We want to love you you who are the giver of all things. We want you, God, to enter our homes, to enter our work, to enter our every waking moment. Oh God, we want you to enter our wounds, to enter our tears. We want you to enter every secret of our life. Oh God, we want you to enter our anxieties. We want you to enter our hearts. Oh God, we want your Holy Spirit. We want you to fill us with your Holy Spirit, oh God, that we will be able to say, it is no longer I who live, but God, you who lives, you who moves, you has your being in you. Oh God, I want this body of mine to be your throne, to be your temple. Oh God, and this morning, this morning as I come to you, God, I celebrate your love. I celebrate your faithful love. Your faithful love where you can never stop being my Abba. As I throw myself into your arms, as I sing of your faithfulness, O God, may your spirit fill my heart, anoint me, God. Oh God, I ask, I seek, I knock as we sing together. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O oh God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Thou changes not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. Let us kneel down as we receive the blessing, praising God, glorifying Him for His great mercy. Great is 
thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning New mercies I see All I have needed Thy hand has provided Great conference with a youth retreat and family renewal retreat from December 18 to 23rd. You're welcome to stay for Christmas. Special retreats to be led by Father Augustin Waluran and Father John Kanicheri and Father Dibin Aluwasheri and the Divine Retreat Center team. For more details, contact us at divineretreatcenter at gmail.com.